We are people and we love to get connected. We connect as families because of birth. We connect as friends because we click. And we connect as communities because we care. Seventh-day Adventists are people who connect in communities called congregations, which in turn connect to form conferences, who connect together to form unions, divisions, and the general conference. Why do we connect? It starts with a connection to the Creator who invites us on a spiritual journey. When we journey together, we can help each other along the way. This journey is a journey of a lifetime. And as we learn and grow, life becomes filled with meaning and purpose. Our greatest joy is in helping others along the way. Wherever you are on your journey, we believe that we have something to offer that can make your life more whole. So the next time you see a Seventh-day Adventist, remember, you're not looking at someone who stands alone. They are connected to a world church that has 18 million members gathered in 13 divisions comprised of 122 unions formed by 600 conferences serving in 140,000 congregations in 208 countries who worship in 924 languages and they all want to connect with you. yesterday. What happened? Weekend has started. Weekend has started. It has? <laughs> on, on Wednesday uh, evening, the weekend has started in Oman. Yes. Thursday. Thursday. Uh, I want to start off by asking you, and maybe this is a dangerous question, but if you are here, if you were not here yesterday, uh, you are absolved of this responsibility. You are, you are free from this request. But if you were here yesterday, what are some lessons, some items that you remember from yesterday's message to help those brothers and sisters who maybe were not here yesterday? What do you remember from yesterday? Just shout it out like, you know, random popcorn, just anything that you remember. What do you remember from yesterday? <laughs> dunk. Not Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> but Dunk. Sometimes God puts us in the Dunk situation to yes. learn from it. Yes. And we also can learn that from to judge others. Yes. Very good. Very good. Yes. Very good. Anyone else? What do you remember from yesterday? This, this is why we have church families yet to provoke each other to remembrance. We often don't even remember what we ate for breakfast yesterday. Yes, sister. Yeah, I remember you said, never think that those who get into trouble yes. are more sinful than you. Yes, yes. It's a temptation sometimes to think that way. Yes, very good. Anyone else? Another year has given to us to bring fruits. Another year has given, Another year has been given to us to bring forth fruit. Yes. Brother. Yeah, like grapes. Finally, we need to be blessings to others. Yes, we need to be blessing to others, to the grapes around us. Yes. Anyone else? Who do you remember from yesterday? A long time ago. Yes. The importance of the fig tree in the vineyard. The importance of the fig tree in the vineyard. And Luke chapter 13. Eh? And Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13. Okay. She even remembers the verse. She gets extra food for potluck this uh, this and this. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? What do you remember from yesterday? Yeah, do you remember? No? You're, you're okay. You're saying hello? Do you remember something we from should, yesterday? If we are caught hot, we should, we should take a stick. If Jesus takes a stick, he takes in our heart, he stamps on it and twists it. Uh huh. Uh, okay. Jesus stabs our heart, spiritually speaking, to make it nice and soft. Yes, okay. Not literal, okay? Not literal. We, we start taking a literal. Very good, very good. You remember a very good 
digging and the dug dunging together. Yes. Okay. Anything else to remember from history? God has brought us here with a purpose. God has brought us here for a purpose. Yes. Amen to that, sister. Very good. Anyone else? Okay, very good, very good. Let's today, uh, the sermon, we'll look at two passages of scripture. We will go to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. If you are there, please say Amen. If you are not there, please say, wait for me. Okay, we shall wait for you. Please hurry up, you're making the sermon longer. <laughs> Isaiah 58. Isaiah is one of the longer books in the Old Testament. Chapter 58 is after chapter 57, if you didn't know. Okay, chapter 58. And uh, before we read Holy Scripture, I'm gonna, I know we prayed, and thank you, brother, for the prayer, but I'm going to ask that you back that just one more time. Pray with me. Gracious Father, as we read Holy Scripture, we ask for the Holy Spirit to bless us with holy understanding. Father, this does not come from a human speaker. This, not, this does not come from human wisdom or human knowledge. This only comes from you. So we ask for your blessing to your people tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13. The Bible says, Because, if because of the Sabbath, you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and honor it, desisting from your own ways, from seeking your own pleasure and speaking your own word. Then you will take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth, and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. How many of you have, has this verse been very familiar to you as Seventh-day Adventists? I remember when I was young, that this verse, this verse was read to me many times. And every time that the church, uh, we had a, a church and we had a little bit of a, a grass, a little spot here, and the children go and we would play on Sabbath. And some of the others says, no, you cannot have fun on Sabbath. The Bible says you must not have pleasure on Sabbath. We must be unhappy on Sabbath. And I thought that was the most ridiculous thing. But then there was the Bible verse here, and it said that uh, you must refrain from doing your own pleasure. And many Seventh-day Adventists have been abused by this verse. Yes or no? And so what happens is many, uh, and maybe some of you, you come to church and you look angry. Yes? Yes? Now, I know, I know how it is. You have worked for many days, and you're tired, and now you have to come to church. And, 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 the, and, the, the, past, and the pastor did not tell me to say this, so it, this does not come from him. This is just from my experience. I know when you sit there, you think that the pastor does not see you, but the pastor sees you. You think when you sit there, like, I am now invisible. I am one of many people. He does not know if I'm falling. We know when you're falling asleep. He does not know when I'm not paying. We know when you're not paying attention. And he does not know that I'm very angry. We know when you're angry and your facial expression is very angry. Some of you are very angry right now and you're scaring me right now. So I will look at the Bible instead. Sometimes we come to church and we come, we, we have this, this, just these burdens that we have and we come to church and we're tired. And we, you know, we frown and we say, Happy Sabbath, how are you? Yes, I have a good Sabbath too, Happy Sabbath. And we have these, just, this, this, this angle goes down. The Bible says here, If because of the Sabbath you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure, is the Bible saying, especially in Isaiah, that you should not do your own pleasure on this? Is that what it's saying? A closer look, we must look at the entire chapter of Isaiah 58, and if you will entertain me, let's go to verse 1. What verse did I say? Verse 1. The Bible says, are you there? Okay, verse 1. Cry loudly, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob their sins. 
Yet they seek me day by day and delight to know my ways. As a nation that has done righteousness and has not forsaken the ordinance of their God. They ask me for their just decisions and they delight in the nearness of God. What word did I read with emphasis that was repeated twice in verse 2? What word? Delight. delight. Very interesting. In the Hebrew language, the word for delight and the word for pleasure in verse 13 is the same word. Do you understand? The same word. So we can read it one more time. Verse 2. Yet they seek me day by day and take pleasure to know my ways. If you skip down. They take pleasure in the nearness of God. Is this a good congregation? Are they seeking God day by day? Yes, they are. Are they delighting to know God's ways? Yes, they are. Are they a nation that has done righteousness? Yes, they're. Is this a good church congregation? It is. It is, but very interesting. Verse 3, this congregation asks, Why have we fasted and you do not see? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not notice? Behold, on the day of your fast, you find your desire and drive hard all your workers. Behold, you fast for contention and strife and to strike with the wicked fist. Yet you do not fast like you do today to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast like this which I have chosen? A day for a man to humble himself? Is it for a bowing one's head like a reed and for spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed? Will you call this a fast even as an acceptable day to the Lord? I'll be very, very simple here. This is the Jewish people and they took pleasure in spiritual things, in religious things. They went to church, they followed all of God's laws, but they did it according to the way they wanted to do it. And they did it in a very selfish way. Is it possible to go to church, to be a follower of Jesus, and not help the poor people around them? Is it possible to, to listen to Bible study, to come to midweek, revival week, uh, uh, during the middle of the week, and not help out the widow or the orphan or those out there? Is it possible to have a selfish religion, yet still be spirit? Is it possible? And this is what, what God here is rebuking. He says here, verse 6, this is what we should be doing. Is this not the fast which I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house? When you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Meaning religion, church, Bible study, sermons was a selfish exercise. And even Sabbath keeping was a selfish exercise. They did Sabbath keeping just so that the God, you must be happy because I am so righteous. I am keeping all your laws. And what does this sound like? That there's what kind of people is this passage describing? To me, it sounds like the Pharisees. Yes. They said, Ah, oh, we have done all this, and God, how come you're not taking favor? And so God says at the end, verse 13. If because on the Sabbath you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight and honor it and desisting from your own ways, from seeking your own pleasure and speaking your own word, meaning they were keeping Sabbath the way they wanted to. Very powerful that Sabbath from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday it is a time that is not controllable by human hands. Yes. It is something outside of our power that the sun controls that time. It is not that we worship the sun, but God has given that authority to the sun. And something happens. When the sun goes down on Friday night, time, time becomes holy. Do you know what time is? Do you all want to experience time? This is time. Are you ready? Are you ready? You guys don't look very excited. 
Do you want to experience time? Ready, this is time. Three, two, one. That's time. Did you experience it? Did you, did you, did you, did you, you don't feel it, you don't see it, you experience it. What is time? I, I, in this time, God puts his presence in it. In other denominations, other religions, God is not in time, he's in space. Yes or no? So you go to certain cities that are holy cities or certain temples that are holy temples, or certain rooms that are holy rooms. But the Bible does not talk about holy spaces here on earth, but it talks about holy time. And during this time, we do not buy, we do not sell, we do not work, and we just dwell with God in His holiness. So this passage, Verse 13 is talking to Seventh-day Advent. And there's a special blessing specifically to Seventh-day Adventists. Tomorrow is... Uh, what day is tomorrow? I forgot what day. Today is, is Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday. When the sun goes down tomorrow night, something amazing will happen every, as every weekend. God enters into the fabric of of time so that as church members as elders and even pastors we do not have to pray Lord come down into this church we don't need to pray those kind of things Lord be with us we don't need to pray because he's already in the holiness of time does that make sense so rather we need to pray Lord bless our minds and our heart and our hearts that for six days we've been working in the, in, the, in, the, in the week, Lord, help us to enter into your presence and in your holiness. If that is clear, please say, Amen. 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 And it says here, that in verse 14, that at the end of verse 13, uh, from speaking your own pleasure, from speaking your own word, then you will take delight in the Lord. And the promise is this, if you keep the Sabbath this way, specifically for Seventh-day Adventists, Verse 14, I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the promise. If you do this, then I will do this. If then. If you keep the Sabbath the way that I intend, not the way you want to do it, but the way that God wants it to do it, then I will promise you this. What is the promise? Promise number one, I will make you ride on the high places of the earth. What are the high places of the earth? Is he saying that you will go to the mountaintop and you will go on a roller coaster up and down? Is that what God is promising? That doesn't sound like a very good promise. Then he says, I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob. What is he feeding me? What is this heritage? I don't know what, I don't like heritage of Jacob. I just want some good biryani and I'm very happy. Okay? What does this passage, this promise talking about? When the Jews heard about riding on the high places and feeding with the heritage of Jacob, they automatically knew which passage to go to. So we'll go to our second passage today. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. And this is our last passage for today. The sermon is almost over. Yes? Amen? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting started. So in Deuteronomy chapter 32, if you're there, please say amen. amen. If you're not there, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Chapter 32 is called the Song of Moses. I don't know how it is in the Omani tradition or in the Indian subculture or Filipino or, or wherever you may be from, from Zimbabwe or from Africa. Uh, in the Korean culture, when someone is about to die, when you're old, they say, my children, come home. Because now it's time to, I'm, I'm, I'm about to die. 
And especially if you are from a immigrant subculture living abroad in some other country, it is a very difficult time. Yes, no. Because you need to go, but then you need to stop things. And, 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 and then if you go too early and your, member does, your family member does not pass away, then you arrive too early. If you arrive too late, then you're too late. And the, and the timing can be very, very, very difficult, very, very anxiety-inducing. But here, Moses is about to die. And he has, he has his final words here. Uh, in Korea, my, my grandfather was about to die. And I don't know how, but old people, old, old, old people, when they're about to die, sometimes they kind of know when they're about to die. And he says, my children come home. And so my uncle, he went over. My other uncle was living in the Philippines. He went to Korea. My mother who was living in uh, North America. She also flew over. And because they are about to die, they call one by one up. And they speak very strong counsel, be the last advice before they die. And he says something like, my son, come here. And my uncle comes up and says, my son, you are my firstborn son. You have been my strength. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes. Yet you have a problem with money. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You need to be careful with your money and be nice to your wife, okay? Okay, Father. Okay. Go away. My daughter, come here. My daughter, you are the prettiest, uh, my prettiest child because you are my only daughter. And you have been my joy and my, 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 the blessing of this family. But you have been far away too long in America and you did not call me enough on the phone. I'll go away. <laughs> my last born son, come here. You have been an annoying son. You have a painful son. You never, you never obeyed me. But in my last years, you are the one who was faithful to me and took care of me all these years. And I want to say thank you. Daddy, daddy, daddy. And then, oh, and then he dies. It's a very dramatic time. Yes, very, very in intense time. This chapter, Moses is about to die. And he says, Israel, come here. All and all of God's people are gathered. And we're not going to read all of it, but we're going, to, we're going to read some portions of it. We're going to go verse 7. Verse 7. Are you there? Verse 7? Yes. The Bible says, Remember the days of old. Consider the years of all your generations. Ask your father and he will inform you. And you uh, Ask your elders and they will tell you. When the Most High God gave the nations their inheritance, when He separated the sons of men, He set the boundaries of the people according to the number of the sons of Israel. The Lord's portion is His people, and Jacob is the allotment of His inheritance. Have we seen this phrase before? The inheritance of Jacob, yes or no? Yes. We saw this in uh, Isaiah 58. And then verse 10, he says, he, God, God found him in a desert land. Do you know about desert land? Yes. Desert land. And in the howling waste of a wilderness, he encircled him and he cared for him and he guarded him as the apple, uh, the pupil of his eye. Or in some chapters, it says the apple of his eye. Question. What is the apple of your eye or the pupil of your eye? What is that? What is that? I want to ask you here tonight, look to the person next to you and look into their eyes. Look, 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 look. Don't look at me, look at them. Look, 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 look. Keep looking at them, keep looking and be very uncomfortable in staring at their eyes. Okay? Now, most, keep looking, keep, do not look at me. If you are Asian, you need to open your eyes really big. Okay? Open your eyes really big. Now, most eyes have... Oh, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Take your, you can take your glasses out. Uh, you need to be married to each other if you are looking too deeply. <laughs> most eyes have white on the outside. Yes or no? Yes. And in the middle, it is, uh, it is brown or black or darker in the middle. Yes or no? Yes. And then keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. And then right in the middle is a black circle. Yes or no? That is called a pupil. 
But in some people, inside that black circle, you will see something. What do you see? And if you do not see it, you need to get closer. What do you see? What do you see? Do you see someone ugly or good looking? Ugly or good looking? <laughs> if it is ugly, we have a problem. If it is good looking, we have a humility problem in this church. Meaning, I'm going to take this microphone. Can I take this microphone out? Meaning, I'm going to use our dear elder here because he is the most respected member of this church. Right now, we are far from each other. In his eyes, I see nothing. I need to get closer. Can I get closer to you, sir? Closer? I still see nothing. I need to get closer. I still see nothing. Now he took his glasses off. Now I get closer. I need to... Oh! I see someone now. Do you see someone? Apple of his eye means we are very well. Not far away, but close. So God is saying to Israel, Israel was the apple of his eye. In other words, my people were very close to, to him. Does that make sense? Yes. You are the apple of his eye. Now keep reading, keep reading. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Verse in verse 10. He encircled him, he cared for him, he guarded him as the apple of his eye. In verse 11, like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that hovers over its young, he spread his wings and caught them and carried them on his pinions. The Lord alone guided him, and there was no foreign god with him, and he made him ride on the high places of the earth. Have we seen that promise before? That was found in Isaiah we see the heritage of Jacob and the high places of the earth. And in between, there is a story about an eagle. Why does God use the story about an eagle? God does not use a story about a parrot. What does a parrot do? Parrots copy other animals, yes? He does not use the story about a peacock. A peacock just takes its feathers out and looks pretty and then you know walks away. It doesn't even fly away, it just walks away. He does not talk to a story about a chicken because what happens to chickens? They end up at KFC. <laughs> he needs a story about an eagle. Eagles are the greatest birds in the sky. Yes. They run all of the heavens belong to them. And what happens is one day there is a Mr. Eagle who meets Miss Eagle and they go to the Musket Seventh-day Adventist Church together and they are together at the, the Young Adult Eagle program and they see each other and they decide to get married. Amen? Amen. And they decide to get married and they decide we are now going to be Mr. and Mrs. Eagle. Now, eagles, when they build their houses, they do not build their houses down on the ground. What kind of birds build their houses down here? Pigeons, sparrows, these small little ugly birds that when they die, you don't even know if they die. They're just insignificant little birds. Eagles look at the highest mountain with the highest tree, the highest branch. And they look around the all area and they find this strong branch and Mrs. Eagle says, I like the real estate in this tree. I want to build a nest here. The nests can be about one meter in circumference and two meters deep. Some can even be three meters deep. These are not small little, you know, bowl nests. These are uh, the birds Khalifa nests that they are building. Now, the, these, 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 these eagles, they go around and they pick up sticks and pieces of wood, and with their beaks, they interweave this building. And they build and they build and they build. It takes two weeks for them. And they build this enormous, big apartment complex. 
And inside, they put salt. They get rabbit fur, leaves, feathers, and they put it on the inside. It makes it nice and soft. And then Mrs. Eagle, she goes on top, and then she comes out a what? An egg. And she sits on the egg. And then Mr. Eagle sits on the egg too. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And then the Mrs. Eagle sits on it. And Mr. both parents take equal share in raising up the egg. Amen? Anyway. So, uh, sitting, 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 sitting. And they, they turn the egg over. And nice and warm. And nice and warm. After a couple of days, they hear... Baby Eagle is born. Baby Eagle looks ugly. All the other church members say, oh, what a beautiful child. But baby is ugly. When the baby first comes out, it's all pink and slimy. And it's just, no, it's got, it looks like an alien with big, with one big eye. It's just like, ah, I can't Ugly, ugly baby. And the baby only wants one thing. It wants food. The baby does not care how busy Mr. Eagle is. The baby does not care how tired Mrs. Eagle is. The baby is a selfish, sinful being. Amen? These children, <laughs> sinful, selfish, they are. So Mother Eagle, she flies out. And eagles can fly up to 200 kilometers per hour. Did you know that? What is the speed limit as you're driving here in Muscat? What is the speed limit? 100. 110. 120. It's too slow for an eagle. The eagle can go faster than the speed limit here, here in Oman. The eagle, they're, they're flying around and they can fly about two kilometers high above the earth and they can see something that's about this big. And then their eyes have targeting sensors. And they can see a little mouse that's running in the middle of the forest. Let's say this mouse's name is called Mickey. Mickey is running in the forest, just minding its own business. Mrs. Eagle's target locks the, to the mouse, and she tucks in her wings. Her wings can be about two meters wingspan. She tucks in, and she dives down, and she dives down 200 kilometers per hour, and she takes out her talents. Do you know her talents? Eagles have such strong talents that they can crush a human femur bone. The human femur bone connects your hip to your knee. This is the strongest bone of your body. Those of you who are nurses, you know that if you break this bone, you need a titanium rod inside to replace it. Very, very strong. But an eagle, with its talons, with its hands, can crush it very easily. So Mrs. Eagle, she flies down and she crushes Mickey. She throws Mickey in the air and she swallows Mickey. And she digests Mickey. She comes flying back to the, the nest and then the baby is crying, food, food, food. But the baby does not open its mouth for anybody. If the baby sees the shape of the mother's beak, the color, and even the little hole on the side of the, the beak. You know, have you ever seen eagles have a little hole on the side? And then even the shape, and it says the hole, the color, and the beak. Yes, password confirmed, that is my mother. And the, the baby opens its mouth. Mommy puts her mouth into the baby's mouth and she gorgeous throws up warm Mickey Mouse soup into the baby. And the baby's like, oh, that feels so good. And what do full babies do? They go to sleep. And mommy and daddy are like, whew, whew. Two hours later, baby wakes up and what? And now Mr. Eagle needs to go find Minnie Mouse and bring her and digest her and put him into the baby. This happens day after day, hour after hour, and slowly baby eagle is getting bigger. Yes, bigger, bigger. Slowly gray fur comes out and the gray fur becomes gray feathers. 
and the head becomes a little wide and slowly becomes not baby eagle, but now teenage eagle. Teen eagle. Now it's a big eagle, and now the whole uh, nest is a little too big for the eagle. And so mama says, baby, I want to talk to you. And teen eagle says, yes, mommy. Yeah, I think it's time. Now it's time. Time for what, mommy? It's time for you to understand your purpose and your destiny. Okay, mommy, what is it? We are a special kind of bird. We are called the Seventh-day Adventist Eagles. God has designed us to fly throughout all that, see this land that you have here, all this land, and see all that sky? This, all of it, is for you to fly. Oh, but you need to learn how to fly, baby. And the baby says, oh, it's okay, mom, it's okay. I'm happy right here. No, 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 baby, you don't understand. The Lord gave us wings. And he gave us eyesight. And he gave us the ability to, to enjoy the air and the heights. No, 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 mommy, it's okay. I don't want to. I don't. Oh, baby, then I'm sorry. Then I have to teach you stage two of the lesson today. And just like the Bible says, like an eagle that stirs up her nest, mother eagle takes her talents that can crush a human femur bone. And she takes it. And she crushes, not the baby, yes, but the nest that she took two weeks in building. All those blessings that mommy had made for child, now she destroys for the baby's well-being. <laughs> Flapping her wings. <laughs> And baby eagle is like, what's going on? Mommy is going crazy. She's destroying my house. This is not fair. How can this be? No, 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 no. Mommy, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where's daddy? Why is daddy not around time like this? And mommy says, she takes her wing that's about one meter long. Says, baby, I love you. And hits the baby. And the baby falls out of the highest tree on the highest mountain of the highest branch. And the baby's falling. falling no, 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 crazy. And the baby's, there, what do I do, what do I do? And the baby is trying to call the emergency phone line for the fire department and the police. But mommy is no longer going to pay for the, the mobile bill anymore for her baby. The baby needs to learn to pay for his own utilities. And so there's no service. He said, my mom is going crazy. What did I do? What did I do? And the mommy had destroyed his, his nice little house with air conditioning and Wi-Fi and microwave and video games and hair dryer and all this stuff is now gone. And now he sees those rocks on the bottom of the mountain getting closer and getting closer and closer. He's like, my mommy doesn't love me anymore. My mommy has forsaken me. My mommy doesn't care for me anymore. My mommy doesn't even exist in my life. And the whole time, mommy is on the edge staring at one thing in the universe. Who is mommy looking at? Baby. And she's got her vision, yes, and she's targeting locking on baby, and she's calculating, calculating, and right before baby is about to die, she swoops in 200 kilometers per mile, per hour, and she, and she catches, she catches baby on her, on her wings, and brings him back to the original spot. Baby goes, <laughs> you know, children who cry and they try to stop it, but they can't. <laughs> they got the weird thing. <laughs> Mommy, I don't know what I did, but I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. I'm so sorry. Please, please don't do it. I'm so sorry. And Mommy says, baby, I love you. <laughs> no. And Mommy is watching, 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 watching. Right before.
before the baby's about to hit. She swoops down 200 miles per hour, catches it on her wings, brings him back. This happens over and over and over and over and over. The, the more stubborn that the baby is, the longer it takes for the baby to learn. Yes or no? Yes. Amen. <laughs> After a while, the baby is now getting used to it. The baby's falling, falling, and mommy is coming a right about. Oop, there she is. Okay. Like, mommy, you don't need to push me. I'll go jump. And she jumps down there, falling, 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 mother. And hop in the app. And then he's getting tired of falling. Sometimes we need to be tired of falling to really turn to what our mommy, our God has said about us. Yes? Sometimes it takes time. It's not that God is wait, uh, that the God is, is slow. Sometimes our minds are slow to understand His promises. Yes or no? So eventually, the, the baby starts looking around and sees Daddy, Daddy Eagle, and Elder Eagle from Sri Lanka, and Pastor Eagle from Korea, and, and, they, and all the anti-eagles who, who make good, you know, pancit and Indian food and all from the church. They're all flying. And then the baby said, maybe, maybe, maybe this theory of flight, maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. And so the baby starts flapping its wings. And what happens? What happens? Do eagles fly like this? No, eagles don't fly like this. Nothing happens. It's just falling down slower. So the beagle keeps watching and what are they? Oh, they're waiting for the wind and then they, they stretch out and then they, they glide, they relax. Oh, and for the first time, the baby doesn't fall. The baby is now, what? Flying. And they fly. This is what's amazing. Eagles have two eyelids. How many eyelids do you have? You have one eyelid, yes? This one. They have two. One is just like yours, mine, and it's just a regular eyelid. They have another eyelid underneath that is clear. Clear skin comes out, and it is UV protected, meaning it has genetically built in sunglasses. Isn't God amazing? So then when a storm, a big storm comes in, all other birds, they focus on the earth and they fly down. But eagles do not focus on the earth, they focus on the sun. They look directly at the sun and their genetic sunglasses come down and they stare and they fly higher and higher and higher. And instead of going down to the earth, they go above the storm. This is our destiny as Seventh-day Adventists, not because it's our denominational name, but we take the Seventh-day Sabbath seriously. Amen? Amen? God promises us to fly on the high places of the earth. And then when we become a Sabbath-keeping people, not just from sundown to sundown because of the law, but because of the presence of God, he gives us the heritage, the inheritance of being called God's people. How many of you want to say, Lord, I've been a Seventh-day Adventist, but I want to be a Seventh-day Adventist. I want to ride on the high places of your earth. Lord, help me to learn how to, what? Fly. Some of you, you're very comfortable in your houses. You're very comfortable in your jobs. You're very comfortable in however the world the Lord has given you. And the Lord is calling you to the next level of spirituality. There's some of you, the Lord has already called you. But you're falling. You're falling. The Lord brings you up, you fall again. And then you fall up and down, up and down, up and down. And you've been doing this for years. You need to learn to now live like a flying eagle and soar. And there's others of you that now you've been flying for a while, but when there's a storm that comes in, instead of going to the ground, going back to your old habits, we need to learn to fly above the storm by focusing on the, the sun of righteousness. How many want to say, Lord, teach me to fly? Teach me to fly. Ellen White says, higher than the highest thought is God's ideal for his children. Is that your ideal as well? Amen.
Let us pray together. Gracious Father, we thank you that you keep us as the apple of your eye. You have promised to a Sabbath keeping people a very special, a very unique blessing. This blessing cannot be found in any other group in the entire country of Oman except for this small group. Father, bless in a very tangible, real, special, unique, different way. Father, for those of my brothers and sisters here who have Sabbath issues, we ask that you work miracles in their lives. Father, for those of us who have no issue with the Sabbath, but we want to keep uh, your law and the Sabbath in a way that's convenient for us, we ask for your mercy. And we ask that you help us to make the right decisions in our lives. For those of us who don't know how to fly, Lord, help us to stop being so stubborn. For those of us who are comforted, uh, too comfortable in our, in our nests, Lord, break apart our nests. And Father, for every person who has risen their hand, Lord, grant us a special blessing from on high. We know higher than the highest thought is your ideal for your children. Cause us to be that which we cannot do by ourselves, but only by your strength. This we pray in Jesus' name, and let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Amen.